Hey, welcome to the channel. So in this video, we will go through the Arc browser from the browser company. We will test it together. We will see what are the features that make it stand out from the other browsers and we'll decide if this is the time for you to change. So let's establish the baseline. So first of all, this browser works only with the Mac OS for now. So if you are a Windows user, unfortunately, you won't be able to use that. Next is that this browser is free. You will ask how they make money. They don't sell your information as far as they tell. As they tell, they will introduce different plans for regular users and for corporate users and this is where they will be able to make the money. Next thing is that this browser is still kind of in beta -ish phase so uh, you need to be invited or apply for the browser and uh, your application will be reviewed and you will get access to the browser. As I understand previously it took some time to get approved but my application literally was approved within like 30 minutes so I'm able to just download it without any invites needed. Probably you will be able to do the same. So now let's dive into the browser and see how it works. So once you will download the browser and once you will open it this is what you are going to see so it will welcome you and it will ask you to start the setup so the setup with this browser is super easy uh, as you can see it will allow you to export tabs and everything from your previous browser I won't do it in this case next is the feature that a lot of browsers have but I like their design so they allow you to customize your browser experience so this color selection is one of the most robust I've seen so far uh, on top you can see several options here so first of all it allows you here to choose either you want kind of a magic automatic appearance uh, it will automatically change your bra browser color scheme depending on I assume the tabs and whatever scheme you have on your uh, computer I have a dark scheme so that's that's why we have dark right now here is the light scheme and here is the dark by default so I will choose the automatic one next in here you can select any colors that you want uh, once you select the color, there are several more things you can do. So you can, I assume, change kind of the intensity of the color in here. And in here, you can change the texture. So as you can see, it has kind of this film to it. So uh, I really like it. It makes it kind of vintage. -y. So let's uh, choose some color and let's move forward. Okay, next thing I found in here uh, that you can add different colors. So I can create a gradient in here. And as you can see, it starts to shine in completely different light in here. Okay, so here's what I ended up with for now. Let's click next. Now in here, you can select some favorite tabs for yourself. So in here, uh, as I can see, I have like Twitter, Gmail, etc. So I will choose the Gmail calendar, YouTube notion and next. So next we are prompted to sign in in our Google account in order to join calls, see emails, etc. Uh, I will start with my personal email and then add my work email as well. As I understand, it works a little bit different than the classic browser because this is kind of the app that has access to my events. So even without having my calendar open, it still should be able to see my calendar events and let me know if I miss something. That's a pretty neat feature. So next it has a built-in ad blocker, which is really great. So a lot of browsers do that right now. The Sigma OS that I reviewed over here also has this feature. Uh, I work in digital marketing agency, so usually I need to see ads and usually this actually kind of make my life a little bit harder. So I would want that to be per kind of domain basis. So we will see if that's possible. Uh, for now, let's uh, see the ads and yeah, I was looking for a new sock. After that default question, if you want to make a default, I don't yet, so let's continue. Now a really cool feature in here, they create you a, a membership card. Uh, this looks real nice, this is dope. Uh, as I understand, you can download this. Yeah, and then I don't know what to do with that. Probably I will print it and wear it. But yeah, let's uh, go explore. So what you start here is the start screen, which explains you how everything works. So uh, this browser works a little bit different than your classic browsers, especially if you didn't try anything new in a while. So all of your Chrome browsers, they have this classic view where you have the tabs on the on the top and then uh, all of the content on the uh, below, right? The thing about these browsers is that they use the space of your screen a little bit more efficiently. So you have your uh, tabs and everything organizational on the left. And usually you can really quickly hide it in here, as you can see. So if you need to go in full like immersion, then you just click that and uh, you go into the website and look into everything in here. Um, they have much more features in the sidebar. We will look into them in a second. Uh, let's start with the um, get to know in here. So first of all, we have the favorite tabs. So these are the tabs that, uh, as I understand, live with you through all of the workspaces that you have. Uh, another cool thing, as you can see in here, when you hover the uh, uh, favorite tabs in here, I can see my calendar. So I can see what's going on within my day. 
Next, I can see any unread messages that I have. And uh, yeah, for uh, Notion and for YouTube, there is nothing going on right now. But this is really, really, really cool. Uh, because in uh, different browsers, like again, Sigma or Chrome, I usually have to have a pin tab with my calendar, uh, which I have to open from time to time to see where I stand. Right now, it makes my life much more easier. So it's already a huge win for this browser. Next thing that we have is the pin tabs. So pinned tabs in here are tabs that pin for specific uh, space that you have. So we will try the spaces in a second. Uh, this is also a similar feature to other browsers like Sigma and like Google Chrome profiles. It works a little bit differently. Uh, so it basically allows you for a higher segregation of your work versus uh, your personal tabs versus any project tabs that you might have. In my use case and a use case of a lot of people who connect with digital marketing, I have like 20 different Google accounts that I need to log in from time to time. And under each of these Google, uh, Google accounts, I have different things like Google Ads, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, etc. Uh, the problem with standard browsers like Google Chrome is that you can have on basically one um, incognito tab, which you open in incognito, you log in into new account in there, and you can see all of the things that you need. With these browsers, it's a little bit easier. You don't have to open new window. You don't have to have like this window navigation. You stay within the same browser, but you just uh, click between different uh, uh, spaces, um, which makes life a little bit easier. And the last thing is today tabs. So today tabs, as I understand, they are disposable tabs that you open within your within your day. So if you make any research, if you do anything like that, uh, this is where the tabs will appear. As I understand, the feature about these disposable tabs is that within the settings, if you go under general, uh, you have this uh, archive tabs after 12 hours. So what it does is that it will not clutter your browser it will basically turn off the tabs that were not used for 12 hours. That should basically ensure that your browser will work faster and you will not have tabs that you do not really need anymore. Okay, so let's move forward. Once you scroll, you will see a video which basically explains uh, again, how everything works, uh, but you just had me, so you don't need to watch it anymore. And after that, it shows some puzzles that basically show the main features of the browser, like what are the goals in here. Okay, so the first thing I like about the browser, it's not really unique, but all of your shortcuts are the same as Google Chrome. So if you are used to that, you will be able to start using the Arc browser really quickly. Again, it's a little bit different than other browsers. Um, if you watch my Sigma overview, Sigma has this simplified shortcut that make the browsing a little bit faster, but you need to learn them, which kind of makes it difficult. Okay, so now let's dive into the structure a little bit more. So as I mentioned, on the left, we have several types of, of things. So first of all, these pinned tabs, even if you click Command V, you won't be able to close them. As you can see, it will just send me otherwise. So this is the reason for these pinned tabs. Because of that, uh, you will always have them open. There is no way for you to close them. If you want to close them, there are several ways to do that. One is just convert it to the regular tabs by dragging it below this line and then closing. Another one is in here, which you can just close it by clicking this uh, X button. Now, the feature about the Arc browser is that you need to utilize the um, spaces and the folders. Once you have that, this is where it will start to shine. So first of all, right click in here and create a new folder. Now, this will be my workspace. So within the workspace, I would like to have my uh, ad accounts. And now under this folder, which will be pinned in here, I can start opening all of the ad accounts that I usually use. So as you understand, I can now group all of my ad accounts within one tab and have them in here. And then, for example, I can create another folder, which will be my uh, business uh, social accounts. And in here, I can open all of my, again, Facebook accounts, etc., and drop them in this business social. Um, now, let's move with the space and let me show you why it's important to use them. So to create a space, right click in here and create new space. And this space will be personal. Uh, within the personal space, you can customize it and you can add emojis. So add something fun in here. And now once that's created, what you can do next is that you can create a different profile for this space. So if I click uh, right click in here, I can go to profile and create a new profile, which will be my again personal. And in here I can customize the look and then uh, now it should use different accounts. Okay, so for example, I have my personal YouTube account in one space, but my YouTube account where I create videos in another. So in 
here I can log into this one. And now using that, I can be in different accounts uh, on my different spaces. So in here I have the account where I create videos and in here I have the account where I watch videos, right? That really simplifies everything and you don't have to choose the profiles in here, the switch accounts, etc. You just really quickly click in here, right? So in order to swap your spaces, there are several ways you can do that. One, if you work on your Mac, then you can quickly swipe within this, uh, within this panel in here and it will change the profiles automatically. The thing is that I'm using the mouse in here, so I cannot for some reason swipe within here. The other way is to click Control and then one, two, three, four, etc. Uh, depending on which profile you need. So here, Control one, Control two. And the last way is you can just go in here and just click it manually with the mouse, which is the slowest one. Now, the sidebar has one more level of depth to it. So if I click this button in here, it allows me to open my medias, downloads, islands and nodes and the spaces and archive tabs. And within the spaces, I can also see everything that's going on in here. This is also where you can rearrange your spaces, right? You can change the, the places of them and where you can quickly customize all of them. So this one will be work, this one will be personal, this one will be uh, project, let's say. And you can really quickly customize all of them in here. Um, if you click the pencil, this is where you can change the look for uh, for your accounts, right? And as you can see, the font uh, within my sidebar changes from uh, black to white, depending on the cost contrast ratio, which is really, really nice. Now, from here, we can jump into easels and notes. So this is a really neat idea. So if you don't use any note uh, taken app yet, this is where you can start. So within your sidebar, in order to create notes, you can either click a plus or right click again. And this is where you can create the notes, easels, etc. Let's start with the notes. So notes are something similar to what Apple has in their notes. So it can be, for example, your uh, tasks uh, for, um, for the day. And in here, you can outline everything you need to do. I use Notion for something like that. So for me, probably Notion will make more sense. But in here, you can, as you can see, really quickly outline everything, really quickly create lists, etc. Here, you can format everything, add the links, um, and so on and so on. So really neat features in here. As you can see, your nodes are pinned. So what you can do, you can drag them the same way and you can save them within the folders. You can uh, add them uh, also to your favorites. So if, for example, my use case for something like that, if you have your personal passwords, uh, it's a bad way. I'm a CTO of a company and I shouldn't tell you to do that, but you can save your passwords within here and really quickly copy them. Or you can use extensions that uh, this browser supports as well. Now, the next feature is the easel. Easel is basically a mind map. So in here, you can create different dashboards. So let's say it will be uh, dashboard. So here is something really cool that you can do with the easel. So if you will open, uh, let's say some news, uh, let's do like Google News, for example. And next, in here, you have this um, uh, capture portion of this page, right? So what I can do, I can select um, my top stories, for example. So I will do that. And now what I can do is that I can add it to my easel in here. So I will click dashboard and now place it somewhere in here. And now what I can do in here, once I've added it to my dashboard, I can change this screenshot to be not a screenshot, but a live website. And now once it's live, what it will do, it will basically update every time I open my dashboard and it will show me two of the most recent news. Now I can do the same for the weather in here. So as you can see, I can just overlay and it will select a div, which is basically a tile with that. I will copy that, add to my dashboard place it next to that and also make it a live uh, version of the website and it will always keep up to date, which is awesome, which is a, a really, really neat feature. Now, another thing is that you can add a lot of context to that. So for example, you can draw something pretty in here. You can uh, outline the weather in here. You can add like some really cool arrows to the stuff, etc. So if this is something that turns you on, then you can definitely use these dashboards for that. And then once it's ready, you save the dashboard in here and it basically becomes your quick little helper that allows you to do all of cool stuff in here. Next thing I wanted to mention is that uh, you can rename all, all of your tabs in here. So the same way you can customize your favorites. So in here I can right click, change icons, etc. The same thing I can do for my tabs. So I can double click and just call it weather. Uh, next, I can also change the icon for it and do cloud. 
and basically it will simplify um, my navigation within the tab because everything will be easier to see in here. Once you are done with your disposable tabs, what you can do, uh, you can just click clear and it will remove all of them except on the, the one that you are currently on. Because this browser is using a Chromium, which is basically the engine behind the Google Chrome, it supports the same extensions. So in here I can go to extensions, add extension. And now, as you can see, I have the same Chrome web server. So whatever extension you have on your Chrome, you will be able to connect them in here. In my case, I will add Dashlane. This is my password manager and let's see how it works. So once you add that, you just add extension. And now whenever you are within the space, you will be able to go to uh, three dots on the very top in here and here is uh, a quick um, extension button where you can see and manage all of your extensions. Now, the next thing it can do, it can do the split screen really nicely. So if I navigate to the very right in here, uh, as you can see, I can add the split screen below or above. So this is really neat for coding, for example. You can also do the following uh, shortcut in here. Uh, so if you click that, you can choose what you want to have here. So let's say twitter.com. And now I can rearrange, uh, rearrange my tabs and see different things in the same time in here. And if I remove the um, side screen, it will look even better. Now, the next feature I would like to touch is the screenshot tool. So if you navigate in here and click the uh, camera icon, you can basically select any item in here and it will allow you to do several things. So you can either just save it to the library, you can just copy and paste it within your email or anywhere at all. You can uh, save it to your downloads and send it. Another thing is that you can actually edit it. So if I click edit, uh, I have the same features in here as I had in my uh, easel, right? So I can click the pencil, I can start drawing stuff, I can add some more text and then um, send it to someone that I need to. So once it's done, you just copy it and you navigate to your email and paste it in here. The other cool feature is that if you click option command N, it will open something called Little Arc. So Little Arc is basically a browser within the browser. So it allows you to open small windows. And this is especially useful if you are like me and you use different screens. So all of these browsers, uh, again, Sigma, Arc, etc., cetera, uh, they have a problem as they are not tied to the multi-screen experience. Uh, meaning that if I open this browser in here, I have nothing going on in my other screen. Within the Chrome, I can just drag my tabs over, etc., and uh, basically be within the same Chrome account. But in here, um, it probably will open additional browsers for me. Uh, so what I would do and what I would use it for is basically YouTube, most likely. So within the YouTube, uh, I can click um, again YouTube and it will open uh, this new browser and I can just slide it to my other screen in there and it will have the video going on in here. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to mention within the browser as we touch the YouTube is that it works similarly to the Safari. So Safari allows you to do picture in picture within your YouTube, which is really, really neat. Uh, it does it the same. So I can open the YouTube and then I can navigate somewhere in here. And as you can see, it will open the picture in picture, which I can rescale basically to any size in here. And I can also drop it to my other screen. So I don't even have to use little arc. I can open the video in one tab and have the work in other tab. And if needed, I can really quickly navigate back to tab if I need to change something or leave a nasty comment. Now, for everyone who watched till this moment, uh, I will go in here and open my gift URL so you can download the ARC for yourself. I will not paste this in my description, so only if you watch this video, you will be able to actually use that. So now let's make kind of a conclusion. Uh, what do I think about that? It's really neat. It's super, super fast. It's, I think, faster than Sigma. I think it's on the same level as Safari on Mac and Safari works really fast, uh, but it has much, much, much going on in terms of the features, in terms of customization for your personal use cases. I will keep using this browser for another month or two and I will see if it will stick. I really believe that just by changing the tools that you work with, you can actually boost your productivity fairly easily. If you found any portion of this video helpful, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel as I make a lot of videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.